Hello YouTube, Robert Alvarez the Psychic Witch, also known as Mr. Lighting on a Fan. Right now the time is approximately 10.34 p.m. and the current date is Monday, April 30th, 2018. It is the night after the full moon in Scorpio and the night before Beltane, which is a fertility festival in many magical traditions. It's one of the fire festivals, one of the high holy days on the Witch's Wheel of the Year. And it is definitely, um, you know, I cannot help but laugh because, again, it's a fertility ritual. It's a fertility rite. And one of the most well-known chants associated with Beltane goes something like this. Pole in the hole! Pole in the hole! <clears throat> So you get the idea. Anyway, um, so I'm, I, it's so funny because, you know, I, I've written about sacred solitude on my professional metaphysically oriented WordPress blog, This Is Who I Am, so many times over the years. And it remains one of the most beautiful powerful and sacred of my spiritual practices and one of my personal favorites there is something um r that really does it for me when i engage in sacred solitude and i think i've talked about this in a previous video but i wanted to talk about it a little bit more because it makes a huge difference for me. And every every sacred solitude sojourn is different for me. It's not always the same. So this is how I engage in sacred solitude. Number one, I stay home. Number two, my smartphone, laptop, and tablet are turned off. Number three, I have no contact with the outside world. And number four, I engage in spiritually uplifting activities including but not limited to prayer, meditation, visualization, and journal writing. And it was very relaxing. This, this particular sacred solitude sojourn was very relaxing and very restorative. I took so many delicious naps. Oh, naps are so good. I, I think that adults appreciate naps more. I don't know why. That, I think that's just me. I mean, maybe I'm saying that because I'm 48 as opposed to 8, but still. Um, but it was, you know, aside from the delicious naps, uh, I had coffee, I had tea, I spent some time reading. Um, I've been rereading several of Catherine Ponder's prosperity books, and I'm actually at the tail end of Open Your Mind to Prosperity which is uh, one of my personal favorites of her prosperity books. And it never ceases to amaze me how wonderful it is to read and reread her books. Um, I, I think there's maybe one or two of her books that I have yet to read, um, which again is so rare, but in any event. And I did something that I had not done in a very long time. I, th I think the last time that I did it was 2015. And that was give myself a reading. I want to actually um, show you um, the journal that I use. Now, this is, this is a separate journal. So let me show it to you first. Okay. So this looks like a Mead five-star um premier notebook and it is but this is the notebook that i use as a tarot journal now how i use this as a tarot journal is twofold number one when i am working with a new tarot deck and one that i'm studying one that i'm i'm attuning to one that i'm working with and number two when i give myself a reading now I want to tell you something. This notebook, this tarot journal, this is my second volume of tarot journals. And I can honestly say that just this tarot journal has given me ideas for at least 10 
separate videos. Amazing to me. I was just like, wow. And I was really thinking about this the other day. And I was like, wow. So many really cool videos are being brought forth or being created. At least planting the seed of their birth through this one book through this through this tarot journal and um, I'm really very excited about the series of, of videos that are going to come forth from using this tarot journal and I'm I'm gonna say a little bit more about this but I'm not gonna say too much more so one thing that I found that works for me and again I, I must make clear that this is what works for me. What works for you is what works for you. But what I found works for me is when I give myself a reading, I prepare for it as if I was giving a, a paying client a reading. So I would select the deck. I would tune into my psychic guides and through meditation and prayer, and then I would ask, which deck am I going to use for this client? And with me, I use traditional spreads, meaning that when I give a paying client a reading, I lay the cards out where my psychic guides direct me to, to lay them out. I don't use a traditional spread, whether it's a focused spread or a comprehensive spread. Uh, I will place the cards where I'm divinely directed to do so, and I'll read from that perspective. But I primarily read the energy that's emanating from those cards. And I do that when I give myself readings as well. But the most important thing when I give myself a reading is I must write down exactly what comes into my mind word for word. No abbreviations, no editing. Because the second I start doing that, that's when my connection to my psychic guides falters. And it's like, that's not what they're telling me. And it is a time-consuming process. I spent more than an hour recording what the realm of the divine told me with regards to the cards and with regards to um, the cards positions just for an eight card spread. Now an eight card spread is less than a 10 card spread and probably one of the most well-known 10 card spreads is the Celtic cross. Although technically it's 11, but you, you get the idea. So I know that this is a time consuming process and I know that not everybody has the patience or the willingness to do this. So this is something that I, I know that works for me. I do it. And again, I always, I always make sure that whatever I'm receiving, I copy it word for word exactly as it's being given to me. Ironically, the spread for this reading came from uh, an oracle card deck. It came from the Ask an Angel oracle cards created by Tony Carmine Salerno, who is one of the co-founders of Blue Angel Gallery in Glen Waverley, Victoria, Australia. And I really loved the fact that it was a chakra-oriented spread. And uh, no, I did not use a chakra-oriented uh, tarot deck. Uh, they, I think they do exist. I just, I don't recall offhand any chakra themed tarot decks but I, I have several chakra themed oracle card decks but I definitely enjoyed um, reconnecting with this sacred practice reconnecting with a tarot deck in this way reconnecting with this tarot journal in this way and and I'm looking forward to uh, to more of this in fact um, given the popularity of my deck interview videos I might actually start sharing some of the insights that I receive from these readings. I may not do it all the time. Um, and for the record, that would be a long video. I mean, if I were to actually share everything that I write, that would be a long video. But I do feel led to do something in the future in that regard. And again, when I was thinking about um, this volume, I began receiving ideas for videos that could probably create at least, that could probably lead to the creation of at least 10 or 11 videos. So it was very interesting. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. It was, it was a surprise to me. It was a good surprise, actually. 
So I'm, I'm looking forward to working with this uh, more often. And normally what I used to do was I would give myself a reading either the night before, the day of, or the day after a full moon. Uh, this time it turned out to be the night before the full moon. And um, now what I've noticed is that I find myself being more led to give myself a reading this way um, during a waning moon phase. And both as a moon magic witch and as a professional psychic, I find that having a reading anytime during the lunar month is ideal. But there's something really powerful and really potent about having a reading during a waning moon phase. And um, especially during the dark moon tides, which are the three nights before the new moon, uh, which happens to be um, the uh, psychic fair at, at, in Beacon, New York. Um, it's actually three, it's the third day before the new moon. So it is absolutely during the dark moon tides. So I'm really excited about that. The, the readings are going to be very trippy in, in my mind, uh, but I digress. I'm really looking forward to reconnecting with some tarotics that I haven't used in a long time. And I also am looking forward to using some of the decks that I have for my exclusive use, which I had not used in a long time. So there, there are a lot of opportunities for sacred play coming up for me over the next few months, or rather over the next few months. Um, so yeah, I'm, I feel like, I feel very excited and I feel like once again, you know, this, my life is becoming more of an adventure. And that really means a lot to me. That's become so much more important to me now. And maybe it's because of the physical challenges that I had earlier this year and last year. Maybe it was because of some of the personal issues I had last year. But for whatever reason or reasons, I find myself um, really wanting and almost needing to make my life more of, a, of an adventure. And... Um, I can honestly say that May is going to be a delightfully adventurous month for me. It really is. Mm. But in the meantime, I wanted to um, give you just a quick, this, is, this was more like a quick update video, and I also wanted to talk a little bit more about how I engage in sacred solitude. And I must... I absolutely must express gratitude to all the celestial beings that are sacred to me, the goddesses, the gods, the ascended masters, the angels, the sacred fae, the saints, the spirit guides, the psychic guides, the ancestors, the spirit animals, for helping me create a life where I can do this. Because for years, I would recommend to my clients that they would also engage in their own sacred solitude sojourns. And so many of them do not have lives that are structured in such a way that they can do this. So it means a lot to me, and it, it's very important to me that my life is structured in such a way that I can do this, that I really can take a three-day period during the week. It doesn't even have to be a weekend or a long weekend. And I can engage in sacred solitude in such a way that I don't have contact with the outside world and I don't have my electronics on and I can focus on my inner realms and focus on what I call the realms of the goddess and tune out the world of men. And it really means a lot to me to do that. It really makes a big difference for me. Um, although I must admit, um, I also did enjoy um, putting away a lot of clothes and uh, putting a lot of clothes in my new dresser drawers and things like that. Um, and I kept thinking to myself, I must look like a supermodel after all these naps. Naps, because seriously, I'm, I must have, I, especially the first day, I think I took two or three naps. And they were all so good. They were all so good and delicious and wonderful. Mm. But it seemed like every day of my three-day sacred solitude sojourn, which was from last Thursday, April 26th, through last Saturday, April 28th, 2018, 
I felt like I took two or three naps a day and I felt amazing. I just felt really amazing. Plus it was really nice to, um, to spend some time reading some cozy mysteries. You know, I'm crazy for cozy mysteries. But anyway, um, with that being said, I want to thank all of you for honoring who I am and what I do. And if you have not already subscribed to the YouTube channel of yours truly, Robert Alvarez, The Psychic Witch, I invite you to do so. Make sure that you click or tap the bell icon. That way you will receive a notification letting you know that I have uploaded a new video. And for those of you who have yet to schedule your private reading with me, whether it is in person for those of you who live or work in the New York City area, or by phone or by Skype or by email for those of you who do not, um, I highly recommend you do so. If you have not already scheduled your private metaphysical class, or your energy healing treatment, then I also recommend that you schedule that as well. I am crystal clear um, that I have a lot of availability thus far in May of 2018, and that looks to be the same for the most part for June and July of 2018. I have no doubt that, especially after the psychic fair organized by Notions and Potions, um, taking place at Chill Wine Bar in Beacon, New York on Saturday, May 12, 2018. My appointments will be less. Uh, I'll be less available because my, my number of appointments will have increased considerably. Not to mention after my upcoming Divine Prosperity simulcast event taking place on Tuesday, May 15, 2018, the date of the new moon in Taurus, sign of money and possession. So, if you have not scheduled your appointments, I highly recommend you do so as soon as possible. Um, I, I promised her that I would not name names, but I have a client who's been using my psychic services since September 2001. And one day she let weeks go by uh, without scheduling an appointment with me. And she was horrified to discover that the two appointment dates that she wanted were no longer available. And I said to her, well, when you first contacted me a month ago, they were available, but, you know, people schedule appointments with you besides you. And she wasn't thrilled about that, but I said to her, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through my calendar planner, and I will go give you a new list of dates, and I highly recommend you make sure that you, you secure the date you want. And she did, before somebody else took it. And there was another date that somebody else took, and it was one of the dates that I presented to her and that a client took it the day after that. So you never know. But in the meantime, I wish all of you many blessings and may the magic that is absolutely sandwiched between yesterday's full moon in Scorpio and tomorrow's Beltane bring you many, many blessings of joy, riches, creativity, and fulfillment.